Now, in honor of the recent revelation that apparently Dave Batista wants to have one last run in WWE, I've kicked out the old trusty blue Tista hoodie, and I'm here to be excited along with so many of you, and if you're not, you can kick rocks. This video is all about Batista, as it should be. And most importantly, on this sixth day of OTR Central Christmas, six reasons WWE needs Batista, and they need him bad. They need him real bad. Let's kick it off. No BS here. Number six. You gotta do it while you still can. It's been three and a half years since Batista last appeared in the WWE. You're talking about a guy who's going to be 49 in January, so the clock is ticking. If you're ever going to do it when he's on the south side of 50, it's probably a good time to do so because pretty soon, for all intents and purposes, even though obviously he looks tremendous and he's in great physical shape, He's going to be getting to a point where he's probably going to be too old to do it on any type of full-time basis. And pretty soon, with his work with Guardians of the Galaxy and some of the other movies he's been in, you might get to a point where he gets a little too big and the schedule becomes way too restrictive to where you can't really have a last full run with Batista. If you're going to get a 12-month run out of him, maybe from WrestleMania to WrestleMania, or a little bit before WrestleMania, hope to God, to WrestleMania, this is the time to strike, strike while the iron is hot. Because number five, WWE needs a lift for WrestleMania season. And in my opinion, they need a major lift for WrestleMania season. I don't know if you can count on The Rock being a lift, and I don't know, frankly, how much of a lift he would be at this point, what type of role he would even have. But when you look and you start thinking about other guys and other names and people you could bring back, there just aren't a lot of people that can give you that short-term boost of adrenaline. And for me, a show that seems to be lacking in major appeal, and in particular lacking in star power, especially with No More Undertaker, you would think, at WrestleMania. It's why they're kicking the tires on another uh, match for God and a match for Shane and probably a match for Kurt at Mania. They're going back to the late 40s bandwagon. Well, shit, if you're going back to the late 40s bandwagon, let's throw Batista on that son of a bitch. And bringing Batista back would be a lift for WrestleMania season. There is no question about it. You could talk about the part-time crap. You could talk about plowing over the young talent. Well, frankly, at this point in time, if the younger talent, which even in that case, most of the younger talent in their mid to late 30s any damn ways, was really any damn good or really worth it, we wouldn't need to bring back a Batista. But the fact is they're not. So ultimately, we do need to bring back a Batista, in part also because of the WWE's failings, as we know over recent years, to create new appealing stars. So sometimes you got to kick the tires on the old ones to give you a short-term boost, and Dave Batista most certainly would be a short-term boost. Number four, you get a star into the fold with some mainstream exposure, some mainstream credibility, mainstream acceptance. When you talk about his work with Guardians of the Galaxy, more people know who Batista is than ever before. And when you look at his movie schedule for 2018 and what's coming out, the big one, obviously, is going to be Avengers Infinity War. That's, I believe, coming out sometime in May. So that's going to be a monster movie. It's going to do massive numbers, and Dave Bautista is going to be a part of that. So even if he misses a few weeks to go around the world to promote the movie, you still want him to be able to go out there on the red carpet at all these premieres all over the place, whether it be the Philippines or China or somewhere in the U.S., and be able to say, hey... You know, here's the movie, this is great, this is awesome, I'm Batista, I fucked Molina, oh no, by the way, I'm back in WWE, you just can't buy that type of promotion, you just can't buy that type of free advertisement. And then you've got other movies coming up later in the year, Escape Plan 2, Hades, this is the sequel, or one of the sequels, I should say, to the movie in 2013 that starred Sylvester Stallone. This one, you're going to have Sylvester Stallone again, you're going to have 50 Cent, you're going to have Batista as a part of it, this First movie did pretty big box office, um, and this one probably will do decent box office too. And then Hotel Artemis, where he's going to be starring alongside of Jodie Foster, is going to be another probably decent-sized movie. So you've got a guy with three movies that are going to get attention this year, three movies that have a chance to be box office successes, and in particular one that we all know could get hit by a truck and all types of sex scandals and still probably gross hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in Avengers Infinity War. So to get a guy like that into the fold 
when his star is as bright as it's ever been in Hollywood, would be a major coup for the WWE. And then also, number three, you get some big matches for some big name opponents. Part of the challenge right now, when you look at the WWE and you look at some of the guys, is trying to envision one, two, three, four, five steps down the road who these guys are going to face off with. You're running out of legitimate, credible challenges for top guys. Well, in comes Batista. You've got a built-in feud with Lesnar right there. You can go Roman Reigns for sure. Braun Strowman, it's believable. Samoa Joe, it's believable. You could always kick the tires on John Cena. And believe me, I think anybody with a pulse would be down for some more talk about Cena's love of kissing babies and hugging fat girls. But right there, you've got a year plus of programming right there out of all these bigger name opponents, specifically Lesnar, if you decide to keep him past 34, which would be a question, but it's something that you could get a match between Lester and Batista and do big box office and more on that in a moment. But ultimately, it's big matches for big opponents. Batista's a perfect guy to fill that gap. Like him, even him and Cena can have a whole different type of feud talking about who's the bigger star with Cena's Ferdinand and everything else that he's going to be in that Transformers movie, in that Bumblebee spinoff. The timing would be right to go back to that again. And again, you could talk about you know, going to the guys of the future and the guys of the future. You know what, at this point in time, let's just focus on making 2018 a really good year because we need to do that. And Batista can help make that happen. Number two, it's really, to me, a chance to redo 2014 and, in this case, do 2014 right. Especially, oh, we could only dream if Batista came back at the 2018 Royal Rumble January 28th in Philly. Could you imagine as everybody is facing that inevitable fear of dread of Roman Reigns winning this Royal Rumble and then going on to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34 and then number 30 hits and all of a sudden it's fucking Batista! And Batista comes out and he wins the Royal Rumble. Damn it all, it'd make him a three-time Royal Rumble winner. I don't give a shit. It saves us from Roman winning. It saves us from having him face Brock Lesnar. And maybe I'm living in a pipe dream, but maybe I'm living in a fantasy world. But honestly, it gets Batista almost universally cheered. Imagine going into Philly, and of all people, it's going to be Batista. That's the big knight in shining armor. It's Batista that ultimately saves the day. And that's exactly what it would happen. It would go over stupendously, because at this point in time, people are going to be ABR, anybody but Roman. Dave Batista, anybody but Roman for sure, and he's a big anybody but Roman. He's an appealing option because to me at this point in time, I want a unique match for that universal title match at WrestleMania 34. Batista Lesnar has so many elements of so many different things going back to the OVW days. This is one of these monster kind of marquee things. There's some MMA, MMA stuff in there. There's so many things, so many more ways this is more infinitely compelling and interesting than another Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar main event at WrestleMania. And you could use Goldberg's second run as an example of how it can work. While granted Goldberg's run was shorter, it was effective. It worked. You had a nice nostalgia pop there. You got some big time matches out of him. You got some nice moments out of him. Why not do the same with Batista? You use that year long run and you could go even more with them than you did with Goldberg. There's so many ways to sit there and do this like they probably wanted to do in 2014 and ultimately didn't work. And for those that are going to sit there because he's not a flippy, kicky guy and he's big, roided up Dave, you know what? Screw you. On his way out in 2014, he put over Daniel Bryan by tapping out at WrestleMania 30, if memory serves me correctly. And he put over the shield a couple of times on his way out the door to go do Guardians of the freaking Galaxy. So you know what? Screw you. It's our time. It's our chance. This is our moment. This is a chance to do things right four years later. And the WWE could do just that. And number one, the number one reason... WWE needs Batista, they need him back, and they need him back in a big way, is because ultimately Batista is fucking awesome! It's freaking Batista! Like, at this point in time, how could you be a huge hater of Batista? If that 2009-2010 run, heel run didn't do it for you, then I don't know what would! 
I mean, he was gold. You had that flexibility with him. You could bring him back initially as a monster babyface and then transition him into being a WWE hating Hollywood heel. And God damn it, Batista could pull it off. You saw how he did it several years back when he was on the way out. No fucks given Dave is one of the great freaking wrestlers of the past 15 years. Because when he doesn't give a shit, he'll say anything, he'll do anything, and by God it works. And I've always felt like people have slept on how good of a performer Dave can be. And how good his sense is, how good his timing is, how much of a deep down charisma there is. All of these different things, his ability to connect on several different planes. But Taste is a fucking man. From the ridiculous flopping selling of Mark Henry's rundown punch to kissing babies and hugging fat girls. How could you not be down with Dave? And at this point I'm heading into 2018, by God, I need something. And this would be a big, huge shot of adrenaline for me. This would get me instantly amped up for the year to come. This would instantly... Get me looking forward to the rest of the year. Because even if some of the other stuff wasn't very good, even if some of the other stuff didn't really matter to me, at least I would get something. Whatever Batista's in, to me, would be freaking gold. You've got opponents there. You've got at least a year's worth of opponents there. You can get some big monster matches at some big shows out of him. There's never been a better time, and there never will be a better time going forward than to bring back Batista right here, right now, WWE. Hunter, I pray to you on everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. Saddle up, get all the Breakfast Club involved, and you got to do the sales job on Dave, you got to do the sales job on Vince, and whoever the hell else needs to be sold on this, because the people, we, you, 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 all of you, deep down, know it in the cockles of your heart and in your loincloth that you want... Batista back in WWE. And ultimately we all know, as I've just spelled out, there are at least six reasons WWE needs Batista and they need him in a bad way.